So still working on linear programming here, but this time we need to talk about something called optimal integer solutions. Now an integer is a whole number, and when we're optimizing these linear programming questions, sometimes it's super important that the answer is an integer, a whole number. Now so far with all the questions you've tried, that sort of just happened by default, but it doesn't always happen. Let's take a look at an example where that doesn't happen and you've got to start making some choices about things. So let's build a question up. Here are our constraints. Uh, let's take a look at what happens when we graph all of those constraints and find our feasible region. So I've graphed my uh, feasible region. You can see it's inside of here. And you should notice, probably for the first time that you've seen, each of these points is a decimal answer. 3.187.27, 2.27, 10.91, 2.85, 2.3, 6.93, 10.91, 2.3. Now, when we find our optimal solution, either maximum or minimum, we know that it's going to be end up being one of these points, and that point is going to be decimal. So let's create an objective function now and work on this and see what happens next. So my objective function is going to be p equals 30x plus y, and I can use the geometric approach, the parallel line test, to see where my maximums and my minimums are going to be. So let's try that now. So if I rearrange this objective function, I'll end up with y equals p minus 30x. So that means my gradient is negative 30. I've already prepared this over here on GeoGebra. Uh, here we go. You can see this green line here. That's my... Uh, objective function, or at least a line that's parallel to the objective function. If I push that out, you can see that that's going to be one, that first dot there is going to be one of my uh, maximums or minimums, and then if I push it out again, this second dot here is going to be one of my maximums or minimums, so I can count on that. Uh, let's test those two dots to find out which one's the maximum and which one's the minimum. First, I'll sub this into my objective function. It gives me an answer of 79.01. And then I'll sub this into my objective function. And that gives me 210.2. Okay, so far so good, but we don't have any context here. What we do know so far is that this is our minimum value here, and this is our maximum value right here. So what are we looking for? A minimum or a maximum? Well, let's put some context on this. The objective function, uh, let's make p equal to pollution. And let's make x equal to cars. And let's make y equal to motorcycles. So you're a delivery company, you use cars and you use motorcycles to deliver things, and you want to minimize the amount of pollution that you're creating. These were your constraints. Here is obviously where your minimum value is. So the final answer, you should use 2.27 cars and 10.91 motorcycles. Now, that's obviously rubbish. You can't use 2.27 cars and you can't use um, 10.91 motorcycles. So then you might say to yourself, well, fine, that's great. I'll just round because I've been rounding for ages now. 2.27 will be 2 and 10.91 will be 11. I'll use 2 cars and I'll use 11 motorcycles. Now, the question, that might work, but the question you have to ask yourself is, does 2 and 11 fit inside of our feasible region. Because if 2 and 11 doesn't fit in there, that's not going to work. So you can't round. This whole thing is nonsense. That's no good. What we need to do instead is zoom in on our minimum region and find out exactly what we're working with. Okay, so let's go right in close here. So I've zoomed right in now. Uh, now, you should be able to see that this counts up from 1 all the way up to sort of 14 up here, a little bit further, 16. And this counts, there's number 2, there's number 3, there's number 4. So I'm only using major grid lines here. So, 
Rounding to 2 and 11 wouldn't have worked because 2 and 11 would put us out here and over here, which is outside of our feasible region. So we're only interested in optimal integers, whole numbers. So the whole numbers exist here, 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 here. You can see there's a whole bunch of them. These are the integers that are closest to this dot. Now, we probably don't have to test them all, uh, but at the very least, I should be testing this one up here, and I should be testing this one. Oops, added an extra dot. This one and this one. So that one's uh, 0 0.33, and this one is 0.315. I think you can probably already figure out which one's going to be the optimal answer there. So just drawing it on here. 3.3 3 was right there, oops, and 3.15 is up there somewhere. So let's try them out. P equals 33. Okay, so I've tested those two dots there. I could test all of those ones in the middle, but you can see that as I move up through there, it's clear that I'm only going to end up uh, back where I started at this 93. So there is my optimal integer solution. So you really want to think about these very, very carefully as you're doing them. Uh, you can see that our optimal integer solution ends up being here, which is much, much closer to this point, which wasn't a minimum or a maximum, uh, absolutely, but this, because this was our actual minimum, once we end up with an optimal integer solution, we have to consider these integers. Okay, that's the optimal integer solution um, method for linear programming.